Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans and welcome along to a brand new year of toy reviews starting off with this which is the 12th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver Prop Replica as made by Rubber Toe Replicas and here it is in its box which we'll talk about a little bit later on. So for now let's move straight on to the replica itself. Okay so here we have the all new Sonic Screwdriver. I was never a big fan of its design, but to be honest, it's only when you hold the prop replica that you can truly appreciate its beauty. The toy just does not do it justice. It feels nicely heavy, adding a great degree of realism and authenticity. At the top you can see the sloped emitter head with the central column raised up out of it slightly with a lip around its edge. Below this, four grooves have been cut into the pyramid section where you can see the four other struts of the emitter protrude slightly too. The outer columns of the emitter are housed in this blue cage and are made from a frosted acrylic making them translucent. A silver hex head screw is also present on the back of the cage which holds the emitter in place. It is slightly loose meaning the emitter head can rattle around to a small degree. Moving down to the collar, it has been created from brass and aluminium, or aluminium if you're American or you simply want to say the word incorrectly, <laughs> and it looks very bright and shiny. You can also spot the scores in the brass, which is a byproduct of being CNC'd on a 5-axis machine. On each side are the clamps which hold the emitter in place, and they look excellent. More hex head screws hold their brackets in place, while the clamps themselves look very intricate and beautiful, especially with the minute golden bolts visible on the sides. Some of the edges are quite sharp, and may be slightly dangerous if not treated very carefully. The sliding switch has been crafted from aluminium, with the grooves added to the top of the semicircle for grip, while the metallic plate it rests on also has a large groove cut into it, allowing the slider to move forwards and back. On the opposite side you can see another screw as well as get a better look at that awesome blue paint effect. This is an anodized automotive effect paint, which is applied via spray paint so it will wear off with use, which will give the Sonic a weathered appearance over time. Below this we get the two brass rings, with the lower one slightly smaller than the top. These almost resemble the ring that the 12th Doctor wears, a design choice I hadn't noticed until now. The silver cylinder is created from aluminium and features these elongated oval sections cut into it revealing the brass underneath. The protruding metal struts of the grip are held in place with a screw each and they feel very tough and reinforced. As with the toy, these make the Sonic very easy to hold as the struts fit into my hand extremely comfortably. Beneath them you can make out another cylinder section which has been coated in the blue anodized paint. A silver platform can be seen near the bottom with two more slightly thicker yet smaller platforms beneath it which the grip struts connect to as the Sonic tapers off toward the end which is a nice mix of anodized paint, brass and aluminium. So when it comes to detail, I'm really starting to appreciate the design, especially after seeing it up close and rendered in metal. Turning to features, the screwdriver has the same basic functions as the toy. Originally the first prop had a rotating wheel, but this has since been replaced by the sliding switch as it's easier to use. Sliding it forward will activate its lights and signs. The green setting is very bright and projects well from the end of the emitter, however as the LEDs are located at the bottom, the emitter gets slightly duller toward the top. Another great bonus is that unlike the toy, the slider will stay in place when initiated, meaning you don't have to hold it down all the time to keep the sonic activated. Again, the blue setting looks very bright with a slightly alternate sonic buzzing noise. There are hidden effects just like the toy, so pushing the slider up quickly twice will activate a pulsating green light and sound effect. And sliding the button down twice will start up the rotating blue effect, which is my favourite mode out of the four. A drawback to this is the sound, which is noticeably quieter than the toy. There are no speaker holes present on the Sonic, which was the original plan, but after many requests for no speaker holes from customers, this idea was dropped. The sounds are at a decent volume, and it works for some fans who want the prop to emit no noise, and for others who do. The battery compartment can be reached by screwing off the end cap, where a 4LR44 6 volt battery is already installed upon purchase. I've tried other 4LR44 batteries in here, but the one that seems to fit is the Unicell brand, as others are slightly thicker, so they cannot be installed. 
As for accessories, the screwdriver comes with a display base, which is made from acrylic. It features the usual rubber toe design choice of Gallifrey symbols, which have been applied using laser etched laminate. We get the DW TARDIS insignia with 12th Doctor Sonic screwdriver by rubber toe replicas beneath it, and this is the 112th Sonic in the line with a signature by Nick Roboto underneath. The underside has some rubberized stoppers for grip, as well as a rubber toe sticker. The Sonic slots into the hole on the base where it rests securely and resembles when we were first introduced to the Sonic with it poking up and out of the TARDIS console. A laminated certificate of authenticity is also included with the same information as seen on the base as well as an illustration of the screwdriver with the DW insignia on the reverse. I also received this small leather confession dial pendant which looks great and it's a nice little bonus. The box is made from silver tin with similar graphics as seen on the certificate and base on the lid. Removing the lid you can see a protective foam panel with a hole in the corner which you can use to remove it, revealing the sonic and base embedded into this thick protective foam which includes more of those Gallifrey symbols cut into it. Doing a size comparison you can see that the toy wasn't far off in its sizing but you can no doubt tell the difference between it and the replica in terms of aesthetic design. And as for the Ashton Sonic... Well, the less said, the better. So overall, what do I think of this replica? Well, it's still not my favourite Sonic design, but I am warming to it, especially after holding it in my hands. All credit where it's due, this is Nick Roboto's best Sonic replica to date. It feels like it's melted right through my TV screen. It offers a sturdy construction, even if the emitter is slightly loose, and the ability to leave the sliding button fixed so the Sonic still lights up and makes noise without the need to hold the button is very refreshing even if the sound is quite muted. Add that to the box, the accessories, and the beautiful display base, and all in all, it makes for a stunning replica. I still think this is a prop which is best left for display only, especially if you want to preserve the paint, but what an excellent display piece it makes. And it's great to see a replica made available so soon after its debut on the show. Ultimately, if you're happy with the toy, then this isn't going to provide you with anything new or different. But if you're a huge fan of the screwdriver, and you want a version made by the same person who created the Sonic that Peter Capaldi uses in the show, I definitely recommend it. And so that brings us to the end of this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos, and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, just a little bit of extra, extra votes to Action 07 goodness for you at the end of this video. We're joined by Anthony Murney from Two Penny Milk. We're just going to talk about some of the Sonic Screwdriver prop replicas that I've amassed in my glorious, glorious collection of wonder. This is a prop from one of the Thunderbirds maybe from back in the 60s. It's like a little device that's sitting, you know whenever they use the actual adult hands? Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's one of the little devices that's sitting ah. there. But yeah, I love this. I, I don't think anything is ever going to beat this in terms no, of design. No. This is technically inaccurate because right. on one of the props that was made for the uh, the TV movie, there's a little sort of ball bearing there. And whenever you press that down, that's what extends it. So you do that and it pops open. It's the classic body, yeah. but we get the end cap, uh, which kind of looks like a fez. Yeah. And uh, we also get the light up emitter. This is the one that made me really fall in love with Sonic Screwdrivers. Oh yeah, it was, that was the first one I ever got. I really love this design. I, I, it's small, perhaps a little too small. <laughs> it's like, that's compensating. Hey, regeneration, that's a lottery. It's like it harder. There ah, we go. Ooh, Look at that. I love this Sonic for the simple reason that I can just picture Nick going mental in his workshop one night. Like he's got a load of the 11th Doctor Sonics and he's like, I hate everything! I just hate everything! And he starts smashing them. And then he goes, oh hang on, I'm supposed to sell those. Shark eating Sonic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really like the design until I saw it do that. I thought that was good. I was hoping, praying that it would have a little collapsing part because then that means that the claws would come in and keep this shut. And so that does it for a quick look at some of the Sonic Screwdrivers in my collection. Anthony, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. I enjoyed seeing all these lovely props. On this escapade of madness. 
Uh, so, yeah, thanks very much for watching, folks. Farewell.